to do. You know how after you come through something, you go, Phew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. One of the things that I want us to attempt to do is let's stay on edge for God. Are you okay? I forget which, which, uh, which theologian it was, but he said that if you um, expect great things from God, you have to be willing to attempt great things for God. Amen. Are you here? And so within alignment and within the framework of the team and the cadence, what are you willing to attempt for God? Maybe I want to overstate it and ask, what are we willing to attempt? That's great for God. Beyond our ability, something God-sized. What does it mean for something to be God-sized? It means that we don't have the wherewithal to do it. We, we don't have the wherewithal to accomplish it. And so, you know, uh, individually and collectively, let's, let's pursue God for something God-sized to attempt for God. Are you here? Yeah. yeah. Um, boy, be careful. If you dare to ask, be careful. Be careful. Because he will show you clearly. He will show us. But I thank God for the word. And and uh, it was Ray Kroc. You know, he's, he's really celebrated as the founder of McDonald's. There are actually two brothers, and Ray kind of muscled them up. But that's the backstory. You can read that for yourself. But Ray Kroc said um, that it's teamwork that makes the dream work, right? And so there isn't anything that we can accomplish if we choose to do it together. Amen. There, there really isn't. There, there really isn't. Um, I said it last week, I probably said it the week before, and I'm going to say it again right before Pastor Craig comes, is that wherever there, it, listen, where there is no value, there will be no conflict. Where there is no value, there will be no conflict. Okay? You, 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 one of the ways you, you, can, you can recognize the existence of value is conflict because the enemy is coming for it. He's coming for it. And so if you're experiencing conflict in your home, conflict in your relationships, conflict on the job, conflict in your finances, if you find that you're conflicted internally, the, the part of the primary reason is, is because there is value there. And the enemy always comes for the valuables. The thief cometh not but for to steal, come on, kill, and destroy. But what did Jesus say? I've come that you might have and that you would have it what? I love the paraphrase that says so that you can live it to the full. The enemy comes to rob you of value. Wherever, wherever value exists, there will be conflict over it. And Paul said it this way, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Understand that the, 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 oh Lord help me, the vessel, the jar, the crack pot, the jar of clay have very little value until the treasure. Oh. It's about the treasure. Will you look at somebody and tell them it's about the treasure? It's really about what you carry. It's about what God has deposited in you. And the enemy doesn't want that to get out. He doesn't want you to play your part, to give your peace, to invest in the whole what God has given to you as an individual. It's about the treasure. Paul said because of the treasure, we're troubled on every side. Read what he says next. It's because of the treasure. It's because where, where there is value, there is conflict. You got to see through the conflict and recognize the plan and the scheme of the enemy. Are you here? And, and so you, you, can't, you can't shy away from the conflict. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that riseth to condemn you, to speak evil against you, to speak conflict 
Isaiah, inspired by God, says, you condemn it. You condemn it. Every once in a while, you got to look the devil in the eye and call him a liar. And I'm not talking about your neighbor, your husband, your wife, your children. I'm not, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Don't let the devil fool you into thinking that I'm your problem. And I'm not going to let the devil lie to me and tell me you're my problem. As long as you make people the issue, you've, you've, you've swung and missed. Amen. That's called a strike. It's not about people. It is a spiritual warfare. Because there is value in you. And the enemy is coming to do exactly what he does. Steal it, kill it, or destroy it. But to render it, useless or to extract from it its value no longer valuable Amen. are you here Amen. and the people I live with well I only live with one she is not my problem sometimes the people that visit our house <laughs> but the truth is they are not my problem are you here? Yes. What I've come to recognize is that when, when, whenever I'm around certain people and, and, the, and the level of conflict rises, you, something needs to go off in your head. You need to take note. And then approach those times differently. Be, be more strategic from the standpoint of spiritual warfare. Right? And having done all to stand, Stand there for having your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel. You put on the breastplate of right. You have put on the helmet of salvation. You are you you gear up. You arm yourself, and it don't mean soon as somebody come in the door, yeah, you stabbing at them with the word. It doesn't mean that. But you have to recognize the enemy. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul says, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices, his plans, his schemes, how he comes in to trip us up and mess us up. Are you here? Amen. And so, Pastor George said that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Probably Kareem or somebody, but I don't, anyway, anyway, it's a, a Laker is the greatest of all time. Anyway, anyway, my beloved Lakers, the Lord is breathing life into them right now, even as we speak. My beloved Lakers are coming back, um, uh, but not with a player last name Ball, not none of the ball. Anyway, that's another thing. Uh, it's amazing that um, somebody told me the other day that uh, LeBron James was going to have back surgery in the off season. And I was like, what? They said, yeah, because he carried all those Cavaliers to the finals. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so he needs back surgery. Um, greatest player in the modern day era, the greatest player playing the game right now, nobody probably other than Kareem who could say in their 15th or 16th season they were doing what LeBron James is doing right now. Amen. Do you agree? Whether you don't or not, the, the, the stats speak for themselves. Um, yet without a team, without a team, the greatest player on the floor got swept in the finals. Could not win a single game in the NBA finals. First game, like, un unbelievable, 50 points, 51 points, whatever it was, mad assists, mad rebounds, all kinds of highlights, and without a team. I'll take a team any day. You can be the best, but my team will get you every time. A man in a, in, a, in a movie right here said, can you understand the words Amen. that are coming out of my mouth? 
Nothing's going to happen for us in the economy of the kingdom unless and or until we decide that we're going to function as one. Amen. It's really just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And um, I know that there are some who don't ascribe to that and, um, you know, are not going to do that. And that's fine. That's really fine. What we've decided to do here is be a team and function together. And if that doesn't fit you and who you are and what you want to do, let me know so I can help you find a different place. Oh, you think, did he just say that? Yes, he did. Because anything other than that is a hindrance. And the kingdom is too important. And we're just collectively going to make a decision that we're not going to be hindered. Doing it any other way is just stupid. And for the sake of our time together, stupid is a theological term, so feel free to use it amongst yourselves. Anything? Y'all recognize what Jesus did? God made flesh. Let's establish who he is, right? God. He allowed himself to come here, born of a woman, come in the flesh, uh, St. John 114, you know, so we, be, we beheld his glory, right? Right? The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, even the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, God. And if there was anything he needed to get done, he could have done it. And he could have done it by himself, without any help. In fact, at creation, he did it. But the Bible says he spoke and it happened. And yet when he came to the earth, what did he do? He assembled a team. He assembled a team. Jesus did that. And so this whole idea that you don't need a team, you know I don't believe that. Because Jesus is way up here and you and I are way down here. Okay? And that, that's, that's, that's the deal. We want to we wanna flow. We want to move in concert. But we want to move in sync with God. Um, yeah. And I love what Pastor George said. It, it, God leads by the Spirit. He, he's the leader. He's the leader. He is the leader. Say amen to that. He's amen. the leader. He's the leader. Um, I, I bear the chief responsibility to hear him and make sure that we're flowing and moving after him. Really. But he's the leader. And so, you know, there are a lot of things I would do differently. But it's not my church. It's not. To say it's my church is not even biblical. That, that has no foundation in scripture. It's not. I hear, I hear my colleagues say it all the time. And I just smile and nod. Maybe we have a chance to go for coffee. But it's not my church. It's his. I'm subject to him. Amen. Just like everybody else here. There's an, a, there, I always have another way. Charlie, you know what I'm coming to understand? That most of the time, my other way is not the best way, especially when my other way differs from his way. Amen. So here's where we are. 
And so we, we've had some victories and some wins and some things, and I thank God for that. Um, and let's push forward. Can we do that? Let's push through the stuff that we need to, to push through. Recognize the enemy for who he is and what he's up to, right? And um, we can rebuke, I can rebuke the enemy without rebuking you. <laughs> Come on. You can be angry at you can be angry at the devil without being angry with me. Right. If somehow you confuse me with the devil, you need to come back and do your first works. Yeah. Because I'm not I'm not your problem, nor are you my problem. The first thing we have to do is recognize the, the intrinsic value here. And then, and then once we've, we've done that, then we have to live in the reality that wherever there is value, the enemy is going to come after it. And recognize the, the devil for who he is and what he's up to. And then resist him, the Bible says. And he'll what? Flee. 